So I'm here today to tell you about a new resource for passive house builders and hopefully a resource that will help to lead to many more Canadian passive house windows in the marketplace. And it is the BC reference procedure for using Therm to determine window performance values for use with the passive house planning package. A very long and cumbersome title, which we are hoping that people will think of as the BC reference procedure because it was funded um, by the BC government. It's a public resource funded by the Ministry of Energy Mines and Petroleum Resources with funding from the BC Innovative Clean Energy Fund. <clears throat> and we pitched this project from RDH to the Ministry of Energy as a way of <clears throat> providing Canadian and BC window manufacturers the tools to design a passive house window because the glass data is in the international glass database. They all have therm models and, and window software they use for designing their windows. And there was no easy way to determine the metrics required for the passive house planning package with those tools. So we prepared, we worked together with Peel Passive House Consulting in our proposal to the government, which they accepted and funded. And so this work is jointly owned, well, not jointly owned, it's public, but it was produced jointly by Peel Passive House and RDH. So uh, it was a collaborative effort, and we're presenting it to you today. And really, I'm telling you, I I'm going to reprise with you today the message I'm giving to window and door manufacturers at the Window Door Trade Show, which is taking place today and tomorrow at the International Center by the airport. And our message to Canadian window manufacturers is this. Consider the passive house market for your next generation windows. And a new therm procedure shows you the way. We want to introduce this procedure to them uh, in order to facilitate local, local design of passive house products. So first of all, where can you get this procedure? The easiest way, it's a free download from the Fenestration Association of British Columbia. The government chose this association to funnel their innovative clean energy funds, which funded uh, several projects related to energy efficient fenestration, in including this one. So if you search for BC reference procedure or for PHPP-therm reference procedure in a search engine, you type it in there, you press the button, and you get some hits. And I like to use startpage.com because it anonymizes your searching while using the Google search engine. And pick one of these. Uh, one of these goes to a website that just lets you download the PDF file without any context. Uh, I think it's at Passive House Canada. But if you go to the one that's fenbc.org, it'll take you to a page that uh, lets you download the entire package, which includes a PDF file documenting the reference procedure, uh, an Excel a set of Excel worksheets, which Peel Passive House prepared to help to complete the comp Com <clears throat> computations using the uh, data from the therm files and window files, and a reporting template. The idea is that reports prepared with this methodology are going to have a kind of a standard content format. There are reporting requirements in the procedure. There is a standard reporting template. And the hope is to make these reports easily recognizable as a valid way of demonstrating that your product has a particular set of PHPP metrics. As you open the document inside, you will find a very helpful note from the Passive House Institute. And I'll read that to you here because I think it's very important uh, to establish the credibility of this procedure. The content of this document and the accompanying tools have been independently reviewed and approved by the Passive House Institute Darmstadt, who acknowledge the care and thoroughness with which these resources have been produced. PHI and Passive House planners, consultants, and certifiers registered with PHI are authorized to accept <coughs> reports produced in full accordance with this guideline and its associated reporting requirements as sufficient evidence of window performance in uh, evidence of window performance in PHPP calculations and subsequent building certifications. Those intending to use this methodology for certification should notify their certifier in advance of their intent to do so. Then there's a disclaimer, they're not responsible for errors and omissions. 
Um, and they go on to say, it does not constitute Passive House component certification, nor does it replace the certification process, which is offered through PHI. So uh, again, it's not certification, but it is a methodology that PHI recognizes as valid and acceptable by Passive House certifiers. That's an important, uh, uh, an important uh, gives the document credibility and use. So uh, I'll take you quickly through the calculator. It, uh, this particular um, component was uh, produced by Peel Passive House, and it calculates the head, sill, jam, mullion uh, values that you need for PHPP, including FRSI. And then there's another uh, helpful reference diagram within it. So the question is, who needs this? Well, we think any team that's designing a passive house project in North America. Because even if you're designing a building with products from Europe, you're going to need fire doors made in Canada. You're going to want a commercial entrance door of some kind with the North American hardware, access hardware, and other controls. So you're always going to need some products that are not coming from Europe. And hopefully over time, more and more project products will not have to come from Europe. Um, and this methodology can be used to determine the passive house metrics of anything that you're going to want to use on your building. So that's helpful. But also, we think it's important for any Canadian manufacturer designing a window for 2030. And why now? Well, passive house is growing exponentially, as you all know. And nearly every Canadian window manufacturer today is in some stage of planning their future-oriented product lines. And basically, this is because of the Energy and Mines Minister's Conference, at which point the government and National Resources Canada announced a market transformation strategies for energy using equipment in the building sector. And they announced some very aggressive aspirational targets for the performance of windows. For example, the aspirational goals. By 2020, residential windows in Canada will have an average U factor of 1.6. By 2025, all residentials, windows for sale in Canada meet a U factor of 1.2, and residential windows with a U factor of 0.8 can be manufactured and installed cost effectively. And long term, by 2030, all residential windows for sale in Canada meet a U factor of 0.8. These are pretty aggressive targets, and the deadlines might slip a bit, or maybe they'll relax the U values a little bit. It is very challenging to reach 0.8 under the NFRC system because of the boundary conditions. But um, the, uh, the government is serious in incentivizing and getting the industry to go into that direction. So clearly their intent is to push windows in Canada into temperate climate passive house territory. So their goal is to, by 2030, bring window performance down into this area, which is at about the cool temperate passive house level. That's pretty cool. Well, if that's your end goal, if this is something you as a Canadian window manufacturer are going to be encouraged or incentivized or possibly forced to do at some, you know, in the next 10 years, then maybe you should think about another market for those windows. Maybe you should think about designing a passive house window because people are buying passive house windows today. They're not buying 0.8 Canadian made windows for regular construction projects. So, talking about the tools. The procedure delivers, uh, allows you to calculate UG, UF, UW, UW installed, the psi values, spacer value, the install value, and the FRSI for any fenestration product. We use the window program with modifications to calculate your center of glass U value. We use the um, therm program with modifications to determine UF. <clears throat> we use therm program also with, to, uh, with modifications to determine the spaced <coughs> linear transmi transmittance, the, the psi value. Uh, we also use it to calculate the FRSI, the temperature factor. And then the, uh, using LVL Therm, the actual window wall interface is simulated as well. So, um, 
And so this allows architectural teams. I gave a presentation at Dialogue Architects on this yesterday, which they're quite interested in because they can go from their architectural details and model the heat loss through the, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the heat loss at the installation junction and basically fine tune their design. They now have tools to allow them to do that. Finally, in summary, this procedure delivers the tools to create for all the PHPP inputs you're going to need for a fenestration product using locally available software, locally available glass, and the International Glass Database. So this is something new that we just have not had. Finally, we have a standard uh, uh, template for reporting the values in this methodology. And of course, we, we stress that this is not certification but these values are usable in certified passive house buildings. So our message to window manufacturers is, you know, why should I care about all this? You know, I don't make passive house windows. I'm a Canadian window manufacturer. Well, you got to think about the growth of passive house in Canada today and the opportunity that presents. In the summer of 2014, there was one certified passive house in the city of Vancouver. Five years later, in the summer of 2019, there are over 2,800 residences totaling 4.3 million square feet that are in planning in the city of Vancouver in multiple projects. And there's another 4 million square feet in planning in the rest of Canada. So that's a pretty big market that these manufacturers may not be aware of. And <clears throat> it's growing. This is a selection of half a dozen high-rise passive house buildings currently planned for the city of Vancouver. Um, our company, RDH, is involved as a certifier for the middle project and as passive house designers for the others on the other sides. And the sweet spot for passive house seems to be mid-rise residential. It's the fastest growing sector of passive house in Canada. So thinking about that future, some market observations for manufacturers. By 2030, most of the residential windows now on the market will be obsolete. You can maybe, you might be able to use them in, in replacements. The codes may not allow that. There might be a, re, uh, a new, an existing building code that requires replacement windows to be upgraded to the passive, to the 0.8 level. Uh, another one is China is coming. After a decade of overbuilding, many window manufacturers must export or die. Then passive house is going gangbusters in China. We've had some folks from our company at the uh, recent uh, passive house conference there trade shows, they're building entire cities of passive house buildings. Huge capacity there. So there is going to be competition from imported products like never before for passive house windows. But Canada has what could be potentially a natural advantage, which is the north. By inventing the windows we need for cold and arctic climates, we can create products that will be valued beyond our borders and will allow buildings with larger glass areas because they have lower U values. Because in most of Canada today, passive house projects need better windows than we have. 0 0.8 is not good enough for Toronto. It's not good enough for most of Canada. It's barely good enough for Vancouver. But even in Vancouver, you could get larger glass areas if you had better windows. So there isn't much incentive around the world to look for a 0.6 or better passive house window. You filter the list, you maybe come down to, I forget the last time I did it, four or six products. And some of those don't even exist, they're just designs. So we actually don't have many products available in that uh, performance range, and this could be a sweet spot for Canadian manufacturers. We have a climate that is looking for these kinds of windows. If we develop those windows, we may actually have an export market to other places where they could use higher performing windows than are available in their locale. So we think that best performing windows will allow larger glass areas, and they may also fetch premium prices for people who want to build luxury passive homes and want those larger glass areas. They may be willing to pay more for those windows. Where we're at today, there are currently five companies in BC that are manufacturing passive house windows. <clears throat> Euroline, Inatech, Cascadia, Fenster, and Westec. Uh, two of these are UPVC products based on European designs. Uh, Cascadia Windows, this product is very interesting. It's a, a Canadian, completely Canadian designed product. It's fiberglass framed, 
You can make outswing casement style windows. You can make tilt and turn windows from the same framing system. You just flip it around and have slightly different hardware. And it can be adapted to larger assemblies like window walls as well. So, um, and then we have a Fenster that makes a, a more uh, European style wood window and West Tech Windows, which has an outswing wood casement, passive house window, which is quite, seems to be unusual to me. And they've got performance metrics here. So they're future basically, looking at next generation glazing products. Realistically, globally speaking, the market for 0.8 windows is already crowded. The market for 0.6 and better windows is open. Buildings in cold climates need better performance. And projects in temperate climates want higher glazing ratios. So innovation in frame design is one part of the answer, and innovation in glazing will be another part in uh, shaping the next generation of windows. We're hoping the glass industry will be able to bring us some new technology to kind of ramp things up a bit. Um, these are, of course, you probably all have seen IGs incorporating vacuum insulating glass. Uh, this is a product that the developer has been trying to get underway for several years using suspended films. Suspended films have not really had a great long-term durability record, but the designer of this product uh, was involved with some of those earlier ventures and believes that this version of it will have durability. We'll have to see if that's the case. But there is innovation in glass. And then, of course, what might future frames look like? You know, manufacturers have been thinking about windows as something you can see, but uh, maybe the future lies in windows that are buried into the wall that you don't necessarily have to see the frame. And that could just completely change the paradigm of how you think of a window for a passive house building. So that's it.